Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I am Temi. I make videos on career development, tech and a bit of lifestyle. So if you're interested, do click that subscribe button. As you can tell by the title, we are going to be talking about is engineering worth it? Will it make me a millionaire? Let's get right into it. I think there's a few reasons why people pick engineering going into university. One, it could be just familiarity that people in their family might study engineering and they know what it's like and they're interested in it. Second, you're good at science, maths, but you don't want to be a doctor. And third, you may have Googled what degrees make the most sense or what degree is worth it or what degree is going to make me the most money or has the potential to. Gone down the list and picked engineering. And all of these routes are completely valid, I think. You may have read some statistics saying X percentage of millionaires are engineers or studied engineering. And you may have thought, yeah, that's it. That's my route. I'm good at math science. It makes sense. But in this video, we're going to talk a bit about the job landscape for engineers after graduating. Of course, there are a wide range of engineering degrees. Some are accredited by an engineering body, some aren't. But I'm going to talk specifically from my experience and the experience of some of my friends as well and people I've met in the industry. In the UK, the word engineer is not a protected term. So coming out of university, you may be doing job searches and typing in chemical engineer or mechanical engineer, and you might not be getting much back unless you're filtering by the kind of qualification you need. Particularly in the UK, I found that searching for chemical engineering roles you're more likely to find something searching process engineer, for example, or manufacturing engineer. And if you've done this, you will quickly notice, again, UK, you will quickly notice that the salaries, the type of role you're doing doesn't sound as sexy as that, you know, statistics list or that research you did before uni. A lot of that research is really looking at people who are really established in their field and have climbed the ranks in that field. So they're now able to lead maybe a group of engineers or a team of engineers, or they have a lot of experience and they're able to work for maybe a consulting firm, an engineering consultancy firm. And in that way, you kind of find that it's really similar to every other profession. Medical students graduating, especially in the UK, earn pennies. But getting to consultant level, that's where you start to see, obviously, the increase in salary and you know that's where the fruit of your labor really comes out depending on the kind of engineering you're doing and again speaking from my experience and the experience of other engineers that i know it, it is really comparable to other to other professions there's a really old video on my channel called chemistry versus chemical engineering and i do advise you to watch it if you like chemistry and you're thinking of chemeng but in that video my sister and i discussed the salaries or the starting salaries of chemical engineering graduates versus chemistry graduates and really they're like not that different this is looking at like a typical process engineering role where you would use your chemical engineering knowledge and you may be thinking okay where am i going with this because i i personally studied engineering and i'm like it's sounding like i regret my decision no that's absolutely not where i'm going with this and also just a sidebar as well just a side note that again i'm using my experience and the experience of other engineers that I know. So that includes other chemical engineers and also mechanical engineers too. And just to note also that what I'm saying doesn't necessarily apply to all types of engineering. There's a lot of different engineering disciplines. Certain types of engineering like software engineering or petroleum engineering or electronic and electrical engineering. Some of them might be more in demand just because of the talent pipeline, but also they may just be naturally lucrative because of the industry that they're in. What I'm referring to is more of the, again, in my experience, because I study chemical, in my mind, chemicals quite popular, mechanicals very popular, um, civil is popular. Those, I think in my mind are like the three, and electric and electrical and electronic. Those were the schools in my university. So that's just to kind of cover myself. So going back to what I was saying, to me, it doesn't seem dissimilar to other professions in terms of your progression. What the statistics say, or what they're alluding to, is quite a bit further down in your career than they're making it out to be. Fair enough, your grad salary may be good. Some grads from other subjects may get way less than that. 
So we're already in a great position, that's good. But if we're looking at what we signed up for, <laughs> if we're looking at the statistics, a lot of these statistics I feel are based on people a lot, a lot further on in their career. So in my mind, the progression a lot of the time is not dissimilar to other professions. That's not, for me, that's not a reason why I would pick engineering over a different profession if I'm solely looking at the progression and how lucrative it is. But for me, what makes engineering really powerful is that people like how engineers think. People like how logical they are, how they can solve problems because there's, there's plenty of problems to go around in various organizations. The attention to detail and the ability to analyze several aspects of a problem. An example of that, chemical engineering, you're designing a factory to produce a certain cosmetics product, right? You're not just thinking of the equipment, you're thinking of health and safety, you're thinking of the impact to the environment, you're thinking of which of, of geography, of location, you're thinking of the financials, you're thinking of investors, you're thinking of limitations, you're thinking of raw materials, you're thinking of logistics. There's so, there's so many elements that we are taught to understand and we understand the really tiny details up to the kind of the macro. And you might not know it, studying engineering or even after, but you have been taught in university to think a certain way as an engineering student. And you have skills that are highly adaptable to a wide range of problems. You are valuable to someone, even yourself, if you have the ability to solve problems and to look at something objectively or to think outside the box and question the problem itself. What am I trying to say here? No, engineering will not necessarily make you a millionaire unless you like patent something and you're involved in the design of something that goes on to be like really big and you get royalties and things like that. That would be cool. Or you are a CEO or you have a startup or you own a percentage of a startup that ends up being really successful. These are definitely viable and definitely valid. But can you see how that's separate? It's more the exception and not the rule. I would say these examples. And to me, what I'm realizing or what I'm learning is that there's a difference between using your degree and the exact skills you learn during that degree and your degree being useful. And I think there's a lot you can leverage in that space of your degree being useful and not necessarily you being in the industry that your degree is targeted towards. Both can be true at one time, that is absolutely true. For example, if you work in the oil and gas field and you're a chemical engineer, it's both useful, it's lucrative, and you are using your degree at the same time. But if you're in a different industry, let's say consulting, and you studied engineering, your degree might be useful in the type of clients that you are selected to work with. You might be working with clients who have manufacturing sites, and that knowledge and that background is useful to you. You have a level of familiarity with concepts that other consultants won't have. So it's useful to you, but also you think very analytically. You have experience in understanding the systems that your client might use. Do you see the difference? And I think not many people, from the questions I'm asked, not many people understand this second useful bucket. Most people, think very linearly and I think that's how school has taught us in the UK to think get the degree and do the job the degree is aligned to. That's just not how things work. Again if I wanted to pivot and actually be a chemical engineer I do use my degree now in various ways but I'm not in process design at the moment. If I did want to be in process design I would never search chemical engineer like I, I just would not search that but I would search maybe terms around the word chemical engineer that would include elements of process design or, you know, drawing up PNIDs, instrumentation diagrams, you know, sizing equipment, all of that kind of chem -eng lingo. So if there's anything you take away from this video, your path doesn't need to be linear. There's a difference between your degree being useful 
and you actually strictly using that degree. And I think now more than ever, we're at a time where we can leverage whatever skills we have in so many different ways. So I wouldn't sleep on that. If the title of this video is, will engineering make me a millionaire? Well, your answer is that it could. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you would like to hear more from me, definitely subscribe. Make sure you turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of my videos. And I wanna hear your thoughts in the comments as well. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.